Easter. And I hope you're having a wonderful celebration. This is, unfortunately, the last of our Sundays that we celebrate the Easter season. Never fret, never fear. We are Christians and we believe that we live in the season of Easter every single day of our lives, 365 days out of the year. So we still celebrate. We remember that every sunrise is a reminder of the resurrection of Christ. And I hope that this summer when you come out of your door and see the sunrise and the flowers blooming, that you're reminded that there's always new hope because of what Christ has done for us. Just one or two announcements before we do begin. We did, as we mentioned last week, we're going to have a, a board meeting uh, in order to discuss the future of the congregation, what it's going to look like. It is really an exciting time. It's an opportunity for us to dream big and dream what God is going to do with us in the future. So we have that meeting. We appreciate your prayers. But now you are going to be solicited for your opinions. And so we ask you to please keep an eye open, both on our Facebook page and also in the mail for those who are who are members of the congregation, you will receive a hard copy of what we're going to post on our Facebook page. But even those of you who are not members, we are going to be asking you for your opinions as well, too. Uh, we, it's not about membership. It's about inviting you to Christ. And if you feel like that you are a part of this, what we're trying to do here, and you're committed to this in some way, and you watch our broadcast, we would value your opinions. So please look for that in the next couple of weeks. There'll be a survey online, and you will also be sent one in the mail if you're on our mailing list. And we hope you take seriously, because we're also going to be soliciting you for help. Um, it's easy to give your opinion, but remember, when you give your opinion, you better be willing, number one, to own it, but number two, also to back it up, to help us out. Uh, because again, we may not have the skills or the gifts and abilities that you have, so you might see a need in the congregation and say, we should be doing this. Well, maybe nobody in this congregation has that ability except for you. So if God has put it on your heart, be careful what you say, because maybe you're the person that God is calling to do that very thing that you would like to see us do. So we ask you, please pray about that and pray about our future. And we really are excited and looking forward to that. You've come to worship God. We're here to celebrate Easter in this wonderful season. So let's prepare our hearts with a thanksgiving for baptism, for the claim that God has placed upon our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy, forgiveness, let us therefore give thanks for the gift of holy baptism. We give thanks, O God, for we know that in the beginning your Holy Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains all life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us, therefore, with your Holy Spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor, praise, and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the union of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We invite you to join us in singing today our opening hymn. Once again, these wonderful Easter hymns. And so I hope you've enjoyed the hymns for this season. We get one last crack at these great hymns of this season.
Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us into your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first lesson for today is found in the book of Acts, chapter 1. Now, this is kind of an odd thing that we do here in our lectionary. We put the sermon that Peter preaches after the filling of the Holy Spirit, which doesn't make any sense, at least biblically and theologically, but we're kind of saving up for next week because, hint, hint, next week is the beginning of that season of Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit upon Christ's church. And so let me read you the sermon that Peter preached after he was filled with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Peter stood up amongst the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons. He said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. 
for he was numbered among us, and he was allotted his share in the ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during the time the Lord Jesus went in and amongst us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken from us, one of these must become a witness uh, with us to the resurrection. So the proposed two, Joseph, called Barab Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. And so they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in the ministry of the apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And so they cast lots for them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Here ends the lesson. Our psalm is Psalm 1. Let us read that responsibly. You are welcome at home to join me every other frame. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or, or take, take the, the path, path that sinners tread, tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and, and on, on his, his law they, they meditate day, day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield, yield their fruit in its season, and the leaves do not wither, and, and all, all that they, they do they, they prosper. prosper. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. lesson for this Sunday is found in the book of John, the 17th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said the following prayer for his disciples. This again was at that last supper. He was praying for his disciples. These words, I'm praying for these disciples, for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me, for they are thine. All are mine, are thine, thine are mine. I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to thee. Holy Father, keep them in thy name, which thou hast given, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in thy name, and thou hast given me. I have guarded them, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may be full of joy in of themselves. I have given them the word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the wor world, even as I am of the world. I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of this world, even as I am not of this world, so therefore sanctify them in the truth. The word is truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your mercy this day and for this word that we hear. And we just give you thanks for blessing us with your presence through this season of Easter. And pray that you would remind us that every day for us is an Easter day. For we give thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have a sermon handout for you that you're not going to get to see. Because I'm not going to preach the sermon today. Not the way I have it written. And so I know you might be holding on for dear life. Oh no, how am I going to follow along the sermon? Well, I hope I do an effective job because I just want to preach a message of Easter. And it's very simple. God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for you. God would rather send his son to die for you than live without you. How amazing is that? That makes you something special. You are the icing on God's cake. You are the bee's knees. How's that? Let's come up with that or whatever phrase we can come up with. You are something awesomely special. Now I know, we look around in the world and we see each other what we are and we are filled with faults and warts and I certainly am. There are days that you wouldn't recognize me and I get angry like other people and I say some really mean and cruel things and people say, oh my goodness, and you're a pastor? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm a sinful pastor. Just 
like every other pastor. Some do a better job at hiding it than me. I don't. So I wear my heart on the sleeves and sometimes I'm, oftentimes I'm wrong. But I have some good news. The good news is simply this. God loves me. I am a sinful person, but God loves me. God knows exactly what I am, the content of my character, my nature, what I do and do right, what I do well, do poorly, how I've fallen short, and I'm still loved by God. In fact, I can tell you there is absolutely nothing that one can do that could drive one away from God. Nothing. I will tell you this. We, in our lesson from the book of Acts today, we heard about who again? Oh, let me see. Judas. I'm always saddened when I hear about Judas because I believe that Judas could have been the greatest apostle of the church. You know, the problem with Judas wasn't that he betrayed Jesus. Well, Peter betrayed Jesus and denied him. And so do you and me. We do that often in our lives. We betray him by the uh, lies that we tell, by how we refuse to share God's love with people, maybe because we're bigots or whatever the case might be. So we betray Jesus all the time. We're not going to hell because God loves us. Judas wasn't going to hell because he betrayed Jesus. Judas' problem was simply this. He couldn't live with himself. He couldn't live with himself for three days to see the hope of the resurrection because I have no doubt that Jesus would have forgiven him. Okay? Not even Judas. Not even Judas could have been withheld the love of God. How do I know this? The Bible actually tells us this. On the night which he betrayed, what did Jesus do? He took the sup. That's where the host of the meal would take uh, uh, the bread, dip it in wine, and hand it to his most honored guest at the table. Guess who Jesus handed it to? To Judas, saying, Judas, I know what you're going to do, but I still love you. And I'm offering this to you. Don't give up. So here's my encouragement for you today, because I think a lot of people are giving up. They're just throwing their hands up. You're giving up on life. You're giving up on yourself, but God doesn't give it up on you. God never gives up on you. God is relentless, the Bible says, in his love for you. That he pursued you from heaven to earth. That's what Easter is all about. And why did God do this? Because God, Jesus says right here in John 17, because God wants you to have joy. So I know you many, many of you are holding on by your fingers right now. Your families are at each other's throats. You maybe lost your job. Things just seem crummy. Jesus didn't promise us that we're going to have an easy life. But he does promise us this. Even despite the difficulties of life, even though chaos might reign, it seems like in the world, God has not abandoned you. Why? Because you're the icing on Jesus' cake. You're the bee's knees. You're the one that God came to this world to die for you because God loves you that much. So I am outright telling you, don't give up. Don't let go. Don't give up on yourself. You may have really failed and blown it big this week. So what? Get up. God will dust you off. Pat you on the back and say, well, okay, I'm going to help you do better. How do I know this? Because that's next week's lesson. Because God is going to give you the Holy Spirit we fail. We make a mistake. God picks us up. God dusts us off and passes us on the head, puts our hat back on straight and says, now go back out and try again. But I fail again. Okay, we'll get you back up and try again. Don't give up on yourself. Because God hasn't given up on you. Why? Because God wants you to be filled with joy this day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of this Easter season. What a glorious season it's been. You know, some people want to live in Christmas. I don't want to live in Christmas. I love Christmas. Christmas is a great season, but it's nothing compared to Easter. Because Christmas is nothing without Easter. Who cares? A little baby boy born in Bethlehem, blah, blah, blah. 
There's baby boys born in Bethlehem all the time. I don't want to live in Christmas. I want to live in Easter. 365 days a year where I am reminded that, yes, I failed. But the only person who wants to throw that in my face is Satan himself. And sometimes I do Satan's work by giving up on myself. So what? I failed. God picks me up, dusts me off, straightens me out, pats me on the back and says, you can do better. I'm going to be with you. It's okay. And so God, I'm praying for everybody who's listening today that they not give up on themselves because you have never done that for them. You will never give up on them. You are relentless in your love for that's the message of Easter season. And we give thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen.
give you some hope today, so let us confess the faith that we as the church have historically confessed over 2,000 years. Your parents confessed this faith. Your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents. All the way back to Peter, Paul, and of course, the apostle to the apostles, Mary Magdalene herself. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for this season of Easter that reminds us sunrise is always just a few hours away. We give you thanks for delivering us to this new day, this new season, this new life. And I'm praying that this new life would have an impact on folks. God, we, we come here for a reason, not just to do our duty. We come here to give thanks, to live a life filled with gratitude for the, op pardon me, the opportunities that you provided for us. And so God, help us to be kinder and gentler to those around us. Help us to measure our words with love. Help us to remember that we represent Jesus. No more and no less. And so we pray for those who are brokenhearted this day, for those about ready to give up on life, for those who are fed up with the circumstances for those who feel like their whole world is crashing down upon them, for those who look at the world and only see the negative and fail to see the blessing, I'm asking that you would open their eyes to the world the way you see it. Oh, you see all of those things too, God. And yet you still love it. Because this is your world, imperfect as it may be, along with all the three people and the creatures that fill it, and so I'm praying that you would help us to capture a vision of how good and how kind you have been to us. And how kind we can be, because this is, this is what we're created to be, kind to one another. So we pray for your mercy and love to be upon us, that we might in turn share that same mercy and love with those around us. We pray for this country, for its healing, reconciliation of relationships, the brokenness caused by political divisions, by racism, you'd heal these wounds. We ask you would heal families, sons and daughters, mothers and sons and spouses, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters. You mean for them to live a life together, for friendships, restore them, God. For those who are hungry, use us to feed them. We just commend all those cares upon our hearts this day to you. We trust that you will inspire us to be truly your church your hands, your feet. We give thanks for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. season.